For the man who is head of the civil service, the secretary of the cabinet, an absolutely central player in Downing Street, the fixer who has to keep government on the road and within the rules, is Simon Case. He's had a bad week. The leaked Matt Hancock texts have shown him talking very casually about serious matters. He referred to Boris Johnson as, Johnson as nationally distrusted. He derided something as pure conservative ideology in the texts. None of it was intended for public consumption, and that must be borne in mind. But nevertheless, the Financial Times has reported that Mr Case is thinking about whether he should stay or go from his job. If it was just the texts, there probably wouldn't be any question over his role. But there have been other issues as well, not least his role in the ill-disciplined Partygate days uh, at number 10. Well, Jill Rutter, former senior civil servant who has experience in number 10 and now worked for the UK in a changing Europe think tank, is with me. First of all, Jill, the role, head of the civil service, it's back, back behind the scenes, isn't it? But it's incredibly important. It is very important. So he's the top civil servant of the country. You could argue he's the principal official policy advisor to the Prime Minister in his role as Cabinet Secretary. Job is to make government work behind the scenes. But his other job is to give leadership to all those 400,000 plus civil servants. So it's a very big job. Right. Simon Case came in. He wasn't he wasn't the kind of natural sort of man who had worked his way up through the civil service. He'd been at Buckingham Palace. He was no, a sort you, of strange choice in a way. He was a strange choice. He was an unexpected choice, I think, in some ways. Usually it's blindingly obvious who's going to be the next cabinet secretary. They've probably been permanent secretary of a big department. They've had a very key role in number 10 when, uh, you know, Two cabinet secretaries ago, Lord Hayward, Jeremy Hayward was appointed. It was so obvious that Jeremy Hayward was going to be cabinet secretary at some point. Uh, likewise with his predecessor, Gus O'Donnell, permanent secretary at the Treasury. Simon Case had come back. He'd been pulled back from the palace by Boris Johnson to try and sort out and get uh, government's act together on COVID. He'd been working for Prince William at the palace and was promoted without having run a big department, incredibly young in his early 40s. Um, that's still incredibly young in civil service terms, without having done a really senior job in a big government department. So you could say in that sense, he was a surprise candidate and one who arguably lacked natural authority over his colleagues. Yeah. Um, what is, why are there questions over him, Jill? In your view, what is the thing that has made him most vulnerable in this position? I think there's a number of things um, that's happened. I mean, the circumstance of his promotion already put a question mark over him. Dominic Cummings, you'll remember, memorably told the uh, Health and Social Care and Science and Technology Committees that Cummings had secured Simon Case's appointment to try and get Boris Johnson under control after Cummings's influence lapsed. I think he made a big misjudgment in ever agreeing that the civil service should investigate Partygate. It was clearly going to put the civil service in a very difficult position vis-a-vis -vis the Prime Minister, and we've seen that play out. We then saw Simon Case himself having to recuse himself because he'd been at some parties. I think his response to Partygate was deeply unconvincing. He's put in a number of rather unconvincing performances at the Public Administration Constitutional Affairs Committee about the tensions of trying to manage Boris Johnson, whether it's over wallpaper, the Richard Sharp appointment. Yeah. And the trouble against some, about some cases is quite a long list of instances. It's the cumulative effect. Yeah, none on their own would be considered a scandal quite, but it's the, it's the cumulative effect. I think it's cumulative effect which, you know, question his judgment, question his judgment, admittedly working in very difficult circumstances with the pandemic and with the Prime Minister, as Case himself said, like to test the boundaries of what was acceptable. And I think with that sort of government, there's not really a sense that Simon Case is patrolling those boundaries very effectively. He looks as though he's probably knocking the ball over for six far too often in a rather odd cricket metaphor. <laughs> Jill, thank you for that. Simon Case, all you need to know about the...